Emma and I'm back today for you with another video and today I'm going to be going through some of my bookish opinions okay some of these may be unpopular some of these may be popular all of them are just my opinions <laughs> some of these may have no explanation little to no explanation or tangents you really never know okay but I was inspired to do this by Tori Morrow I'll link her YouTube and her TikTok down in the description below I want to put a little disclaimer right here okay I said uh, that these are gonna be my bookish opinions all right I don't mean any hate to anybody that disagrees with any of my opinions they're all my own they're all subjective book reading itself is subjective so before we start I would really really appreciate it if you guys look down in the description box for all the links there that I have for you guys pertaining to stuff going on in the world right now for example what's going on in Gaza what's going on in Kenya what's going on in Afghanistan what's going on in Kazakhstan anything of the sort uh, those links will be down there for you guys to interact with and to share and then down in the comment section let me know whether or not you guys agree with any of the stuff that I say in this video whether you disagree what y'all's bookish opinions are the works right so with that being said let's just get right into it first uh we're starting with a banger okay because I firmly believe that not everything needs to be a series I love deckled edges okay I love the texture of them I know a lot of people don't like them because uh it does make them harder to turn the page but like with three dark crowns I just love how they look and I love how they feel. Oh, I love them. Trilogies should not be the go-to formula for book series, okay? Not every series needs three books. And I am looking right at you, Fever Star. Love triangles aren't bad. Y'all just have no clue how to write them. <laughs> Mainstream romanticy, purely based off of the books that I have read, okay, um, has not found a good balance between the romance aspect and the fantasy aspect. Okay, one genre always, in my experience, gets left behind or underdeveloped or forgotten about in favor of the other one, depending on which one it is. It doesn't really matter. One of them gets left behind. I'm not reading a book series with more than five books, okay, unless I know about it or unless I am dedicated. I've got things to do, places to go, stuff to steal. Just because the book has a main female character does not make the book feminist. I think that there are other ways to make your characters be bigoted than just having them race to say as many slurs as humanly possible. All right, uh, if that is all you think bigotry is, if you think saying slurs completely encompasses what bigotry is, then that shows me that you have a very surface level or a very shallow sense of what bigotry actually is. Ooh. I want more thriller slash horror main characters with a lick of common sense, all right? Because for me, personally, one, it's phenomenally less annoying, and two, it is phenomenally more entertaining and phenomenally scarier. Because think about it, somebody that's done everything right and they still end up dead, that's terrifying. I don't care, the fake dating trope is annoying as fuck. <laughs> there aren't enough fantasy books with unicorns in them. I think that you can grow out of young adult. Not every romance book needs a sex scene. And branching off of that, not every erotic slash smut book needs a sex scene every single chapter. Dog earring or um, any other violation of a book, as long as it's your own book, who cares? <laughs> you know what, you do what you want with your own book. You bought them, I assume, with your own money. Um, who, who cares? You know what I mean? Like, okay, personally, I dog ear my books all the time. Sometimes I just don't have a bookmark or anything to substitute as a bookmark, all right? And sometimes I just dog ear them for quotes or important things. My copy of Mongrels, completely dog eared, you know? And then my copy of Every Last Word, I got stuck out in the rain in sophomore year of high school with this, and I tried to shove my backpack underneath the bench. And yeah, to say it didn't work, would be kind of an understatement here. You know? As my mother would say, it's proof that it's been loved. The bully trope in romance is not cute. Like, what do you mean you're here telling me that you like this dude after he verbally abused you in front of everybody, humiliated you in front of everybody, tarred and feathered you in front of everybody, called you a dirt snoveling pig, slapped you across the face, spat on you, squirted honey in your hair, and then left you in the hallway to cry about it in front of everybody. That's wild. Ooh. Brother, ooh. I don't know where this came from, but a three star rating of a book is not a bad rating. 
All right, personally, I use three stars as a middle point, right? Five is an odd number. There's going to be a middle point. Whenever I say something is three stars, it's a decent, it's a decent book. It's set out to do what a generalized idea of a book is set out to do. It told a story, you know what I mean? Three stars is okay. It's not awful, but it's also not amazing. It's right in the middle. And that doesn't necessarily mean bad. I don't know where three stars is bad came from. I really don't. Okay. If authors can't handle criticism or negative reviews, obviously barring extremes like bigotry, okay? Do not produce something for people to consume. There are going to be people that just simply don't like the stuff you make, all right? Either for objective reasons, for subjective reasons, or for reasons that they just simply don't like you, all right? That's just how it works. So if you, as an author, go into reviewer spaces, because that's a whole other conversation in and of itself, um, and see that your book has gotten, God forbid, a four-star rating, huh? and not a five-star rating, I know, cover the eyes of the children right now, um, and this reviewer has given you constructive criticism about this book, i.e. objective criticisms of the writing, of the pacing, of the characters, anything of the sort. You see that and you decide to screenshot that and post it on Twitter and start trying to dog this person over it. Don't write anything anymore. Save yourself the shame and the humiliation and save us the irritation and just don't write anything, please. I like personally seeing women snap or lose it or go berserk. I enjoy it. All right. I completely and thoroughly understand the historical aspect of women and hysteria, right? But personally, it's cathartic for me to see a woman get angry, to see a woman go berserk, especially considering the historical context and the modern context as well, that women are not allowed to show anything other than positivity in most spaces, if not all spaces. So personally, it's cathartic for me to see that. You are not a strong, independent female character. What you are is reckless. And you try to disguise that as strong female independence. No. Also, your feminism, okay, that you try to cloak yourself in depends solely on a man to be disobedient to. Hades and Persephone has been romanticized too much. Map does not equal world building or setting description, okay? I'm looking right at you, Odin's child. Security, get the unworthy out of my ring. Oh, come on now. Body horror is one of, if not the best, subgenre of horror. If the book says that it's trying to be either a new, another, or like American Psycho, nine times out of 10, it's just going to try to be as gross and depraved and as despicable as it can be with nothing to show for it other than trying to outstand or upshow another book. In which case, please stand up. Stephen King is not the best horror writer out there. Daughter of the Moon Goddess should have been a standalone. I feel like what a lot of Greystripe went through in the first arc specifically um, of Warriors was brushed to the side and almost forgotten about in favor of Fireheart stuff. Look how they mask with my boy. I don't like the new Warrior Cats covers. <laughs> I don't. I don't like the, the, the hyper-realistic things. I don't. I like the old ones that I have. <laughs> All right, that look like they're painted. All right, that look like gorgeous art pieces. All right, Picasso, my man could never. Contemporary romance books, in my opinion, should rarely, if ever, be over 350 pages long. Most contemporary romance stories thrive in that length. All right, and if you try to extend it, even by maybe 10 pages, all right, one point or another of your story is going to be a slog. All right, and now you've shot yourself in the foot. Not every romance book needs a third act breakup, y'all, all right? The third act breakup has contemporary romance authors by the throat, I fear, all right? The third act breakup, if personified, would have your trachea in its hand, all right? Um, I don't know where the obsession with this came from, but the overuse of it has gotten so tired, all right? It's old, okay? It's a leather couch that is now tarnished and the leather is starting to flake off. 
step-sibling romance is weird if they've grown up from childhood together, all right, because they've grown up with that sibling dynamic. Personally, I should not have to read however many books in a series for it to finally get good or to, for it to finally get entertaining. Just say that you can't write a well-paced series and call it a day. I don't really care if they change stuff in book to movie adaptations. As long as they get the core story right, who, who cares? Love triangles that have siblings in them Okay, where two siblings are fighting over somebody is weird. What do you mean that uh, you're willing to give up this good relationship with a sibling for a rando? Shame! He fell harder as superior and I refuse to hear anything other. In a perfect world, obviously, um, barring money, I generally prefer hardbacks. Um, I just buy paperbacks because at least <laughs> what, about five months ago? They didn't cost an arm and a leg to buy, but I don't know, they're getting pretty up there. Little Miss, 20 bucks for one paperback? You have me so fucked up. Cartoon covers on books get really corny after a while. Talia Hibbert, all right, hands down, is the only romance writer that I have seen write consistently good banter that does not end up sounding cringy as hell. Come here. Come close. It's okay. It's okay. We see you, okay, publishing that unfinished book or publishing that outline and calling it a novella because you think we won't notice. Don't hide. Team Black, Rhaenyra Targaryen, they could never make me hate you. I don't like it when authors rate their own books on Goodreads. I, d I, I just don't like it. I, I, I don't know what it is. And then lastly, um, personally, I despise the word spice. Okay, I hate it. And this is coming from someone who's on book talk. All right. I think also a good bit of this is because it's gotten so overused with so many people being like, okay, well, what's the spice? What's the spice level? Is there spice in this book? Y'all, it just feels a little too family friendly to me. You know what I mean? I completely understand, you know, maybe the word came out of just trying to, um, uh, make it a little less taboo to talk about in public spaces, but I think it's also backfired a little bit um, At least in my opinion considering that spice just sounds a little too family friendly Regardless of what anybody else, you know says how they refer to sex in books doesn't really matter to me um, But you'll always hear me Okay, little miss me me myself and moi say smut <laughs> So you guys, uh, those were all my bookish opinions, at least right now. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you guys could find some sort of camaraderie maybe or something like that. Or maybe this was just something that you like to watch because you like to hear the tea. Nevertheless, you guys, I hope that you've enjoyed. I hope that you guys will continue to look out for more stuff on my channel. I hope that you guys are staying safe. And lastly, I hope that you guys have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.